Okay. Yeah. I said, buddy, he's like, anytime you have a clipboard like a, a lanyard, you'll be okay. <laughs> Pretty professional. Have to look so, legit. everything going okay? First day? Smiling? No, I hate it. I hate it. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's not even the class, it's the people in the class. Absolutely. <laughs> How are we doing back here? The smiling will slow down when Simon goes. She's looking at what? Good. No, but the smiling has already slowed down. It's almost four. Huh? It's almost four o'clock. Yeah, you almost said. One day down, how many more to go? 68 left. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I used to play a lot of junior golf around here and then did a couple of national. I did uh, some shot AJGA, uh, IJ, IJGT, I did, I, I, did, I, did, I did IJGT and I did SCWT. Um, and then I did everything around here in South Florida, yeah, pretty South Florida sectional. Yeah, that was when you were uh, with the 18 and under? Or yeah, 18 and under. And uh, oh, the thing was like. 13 to 15, 15 to 18. Yeah, they had a little bit of a Yeah, I grew up down here, so I played out at Coral Ridge. A couple of good places up in West Palm, like so. I went to high school at Cardinal Gibbons, which is in Marks down here. And, uh, but like I used to get blessed out of Grand Oaks, and Park Beach with your friends. I'm not going to say what these are. I was Mark Wood, Mark Wood Academy forever when he was there, and then I met up with Dan when I was younger, and I just recently tried to get back to the game, and I forgot to see him and stuff. I just played in a pro-am. I'm going to talk to you about it. Yeah, great guy. Great guy. He should have made it already. I know. But he's kind of got a good bunch of clientele and business out there. And he gets got two like, two kids now. Yeah, I know about him. He's at Grand Oaks now. Yeah. Or Jersey was the pro of my course in New Jersey. Yeah, he lives up there. Hamilton Farms. Yeah. Yeah. I know Mark Wood for six, seven years. And then he, now he does insurance. Sure. Totally. Yeah. 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 He still works with, like, was it Rick Van Pelt? Yeah. I do right now. He still works with him, I think, occasionally. Right. Yeah, he's going to be fun. I know Mark Williams. Oh, yeah, what a great guy. Yeah, he's really good, too. He's one of the best guys. Yeah. That was an expert from the tank. He was really cutting into the video tapes and doing all that, like, change on uh, this cyber type thing. He wants yeah. all parts of that. Yeah. 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 But yeah, Dan's got that, like, launch monitor now and stuff like that. That's pretty sweet. Well, Dan, I'm going to forgive him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have to take me now. Uh, what about yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. You like that was yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Uh, chapter 5 is entitled Co-Ownership. Um, the title of the chapter, I want to say now, makes sense. For the first half of the things we're going to talk about, it is about co-ownership. It's about what if two or more people own a piece of property. That's co-ownership. Um, but then it goes on and gets into a, con a bunch of concepts that are really important about entities. Corporations, partnerships, limited partnerships, LLCs. And they talk about that like that's co-ownership. Like that's a bunch of guys owning a piece of property together. And it's not at all. I mean, the, the absurd concept that if you and I have a couple of shares of stock at General Motors, then we're co-owners of the General Motors factory. It doesn't make any sense. But they throw it all in here together because they didn't want to do a separate chapter, apparently, on entities. Entities meaning, you know, corporations, partnerships, whatever. How do you hold title to a piece of property? That's a whole separate concept. It deserved a separate chapter. It gets blended into this chapter entitled co-ownership, and I just want to dispel any notion that these two things have anything to do with each other. They absolutely do not. Okay, but we're going to talk first on what co-ownership really is. 
Co-ownership is two or more people owning a piece of property together at the same time. Now, they own what's called, co-ownership is where you own an undivided interest. You and I own a piece of property together, we each own an undivided half interest in the property. Now that's to be distinguished very heavily from there's a farm and you own the east half and I own the west half. No, that's not co-ownership. That's I own a piece of property and you own a piece of property and we happen to be neighbors. That's fee simple. And it's not co-ownership. Co-ownership is at the same time two or more, five or ten or twenty people own the same piece of property. And the law says they own what's called an undivided interest, which means you can't go point out that he owns this corner and you own that corner and I own that corner. We each collectively own our percentage interest of the same of the whole thing at the same time. There are a bunch of different types of co-ownership. First one we're going to talk about, the text defines as joint tenancy. I'd like you to add to that forever the words with right of survivorship. Everybody calls this in Florida JTWROS, joint tenants with right of survivorship. And I'll tell you why shortly. But we don't use the term just joint tenancy in Florida. It's hugely confusing. It means a lot of different things in a lot of different places. It, it make a hell of a mess out of automobile titles from the uh, motor vehicle people in Tallahassee. And they talk, they throw the term around joint tenancy, and it's a nightmare. Um, some people think jo joint tenancy means any type of tenancy by two or more people. Not at all. That's co-ownership. And then there are lots of types of co-ownership. Joint tenancy, we're talking about here, is joint tenancy with right of survivorship. And what that means is exactly what we just said it is. Upon the death of one of the co-owners, title passes immediately to the survivor. By operation of law, no estate proceeding, no probate, no nothing. The instant I die, you own the whole thing. Immediately. Um, now, there's all these concepts about who has the right to possession at the same time. It's all kind of irrelevant. Theoretically, we were both entitled to possess the whole same thing at the whole time, at the same time. But that just obviously that can't happen. But there's a legal fiction there that says we can't, and that's what it says we're doing. We're both possessing the whole thing at the same time. And it's even weirder if it's a house. You know, it's very hard for two co-owners to possess a house, and unless they're both living there, but usually it's just one or the other. Um, there's a section it talks about in here about what's required to create a joint tenancy, and it's called the four unities. And I bring it up only to tell you that the four unities have been abolished in Florida by statute. They don't exist. They, no, they don't. They are not required. Common law used to say that in order to create a joint tenancy, you had to have these four things. You had to get title at the same time. You had to have the same interest. You had and, 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 you know, a, a bunch of credit. Florida says those are no longer necessary. They're not required. You can create a joint tenancy with right of survivorship simply by saying so. And the by saying so is what I want to talk about now. We have a presumption in Florida against joint tenancy. I'm, I'm skipping forward for half a second, but only to say the next thing we're going to talk about is called tenancy in common. We have a statute in Florida that says that if two people take title to a piece of property and nothing further is said, if it's just A and B, we have a presumption in Florida that says that creates a tenancy in common. Tenancy in common, as you'll see in a minute, has no survivorship. If you want survivorship, if you want a joint tenancy with right of survivorship where upon the death of one of us, I want the other guy to have the whole thing, and you both think that, of course, when you're buying it. 
now, if they survive or have it all, you got to say so. And how you say so is in your deed. You say, you say in your deed to A and B as joint tenants with right of survivorship. And you go on to say, and not as tenants in common. And if they happen to be husband and wife, you say, and not as tenants by the entirety. And we're going to talk about each of those things. But the point is, to create a joint tenancy with right of survivorship in Florida, you've got to say so, and you've got to demonstrate you mean it, because the law assumes that upon your death, it would, you wouldn't want it to pass to the other guy. You'd want it to pass to your heirs and your kids. So if that's really what you meant, you got to really say so. Okay. Uh, in fact, that's, that, it, it, I made a note here on page 88 of the text. It, it calls this... Um, the tenancy in common that we're going to start talking about in a minute is, is tenancy by default. Um, and maybe I got the wrong page here because I'm not sure. I got the wrong edition. No. Uh, tenancy in common that we're going to talk about next is described here in the text as tenancy by default. And that's what we just said. If you don't say something else by default, you've created a tenancy in common. Tenancy in common is exactly the same thing as a joint tenancy. It's two or more people own a piece of property at the same time. It's undivided interest. We both own the whole thing. We are not going to divide who owns this. But there's no right of survivorship. That's it. When A dies, it passes according to A's will. Or if A didn't have a will, it passes according to the estate law to his heirs. If it happened to be with his child, well, maybe it passed to his child but not because of the tenancy in common. Tenancy in common has no automatic right of passage upon death to survivor or to anybody. Tenancy in common means I own it and I get to do with it whatever I want to, including will it. Um, that comment that I just made maybe tees up something that probably isn't clear that I, sh I should say. And the fact that you own something jointly, a joint tenants right of survivorship, that, see, that's where it gets weird. I just said you own something jointly, and that's where it gets confusing. If you own something in common, in co-ownership with somebody else, doesn't mean that you can't sell a mortgage it without them. Sure you can. I can sell you my half interest. That's all you get is a half interest. I can mortgage my half interest. But all of a sudden, if I sell you my half interest, then you own half of this guy. You own half of whoever I used to own half of. So like we talked about about the life estate. It's not real marketable. Hard to sell one of these. But theoretically, sure you can sell them if you can find a buyer. Um, and, and, and let me say one more thing. And that, I apologize. I should, not, that, this is important as to that. If you do that, and it's a joint tenancy with right of survivorship. That terminates the survivorship and converts it to a tenancy in common. If you and I are joint tenants with right of survivorship and I decide I don't want to own the property with you anymore, I'm going to deed it to her. You two are owners now, but there's no more survivorship between the two of you. That kills a joint tenancy with the right of survivorship. A sale, a mortgage, a transfer. Um, we're not going to say a will because you can't will it. it. can't be in your will. It's already going over here. Okay? All right. Now, um, the next thing the text talks about is partition, but I'm going to skip that for a minute. Because the third type of co-ownership I want to discuss now, and it is mentioned in the text, and it is the most prevalent type in Florida, and it is tenancy by the entirety. Florida has it. I think about a dozen states have it. It's co-ownership, husband and wife only. So it's like a joint tenancy with right of survivorship, 
but it's only between spouses. And it does have survivorship. And differently from what I just told you about I could convey my interest to somebody and then they would be co-owners with the spouse? No. You cannot sever a tenancy by the entirety by selling your interest. Only both spouses can sell a property. Only both spouses can mortgage the property. Tenancy by the entirety is very unique. It's got a lot of important legal attributes that we'll talk about. Um, interestingly, I told you before that if you convey property to A and B and you don't see anything at all, you've created tenancy in common. That's true. Unless they happen to be husband and wife. Then Florida statute says we presume tenancy by the entirety. We assume the courts say unless you say something to the contract that if the co-owners of property, both entitled, are husband and wife, we presume that you intended tenancy by the entirety. Once again, the reason is to protect spouses and protect when one spouse dies, the other one's going to have a home. Usually it's a home, but not everything. This can apply to shopping centers, you know. Um, and while you're still married, it's impossible to undo it. Once title is taken that way as husband and wife, one spouse can't say, damn, shouldn't have done that. I'll just go fix it and put it in my name alone. No. Tenancy by the entirety forever until you both agree to sell it or you both agree to mortgage it or whatever you're going to do. Yes, sir. If you're in the um, Tennessee of... Uh, Would you speak a little louder, sir? If okay. you're in, in, uh, in the Tennessee of Tyrese with the uh, wife and husband uh -huh. um, and you get divorced, does that convert to Tennessee of common? It does, exactly, you're exactly right. I was coming to that. It's exactly what happens. The entry of a divorce decree severs the tenancy in common, a tenancy by the entirety, and the parties automatically become tenancy in common. Know if you would that normally what happens is that in a divorce proceeding, the court's going to divide up the property anyway, one way or another. But if it doesn't, by law, the entry of a divorce decree severs a tenancy by the entirety that neither spouse could have done alone during the marriage and creates a tenancy in common. And after that, of course, it's a tenancy in common. Either one can sell their interest to whoever they want to, to each other or to strangers. But who wants to buy a house with your ex-wife? <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's still not very saleable, but at least the right of survivorship is gone. And then the public policy behind this is pretty obvious. We assume that when you were married, you wanted it to pass to your spouse. We doubly assume when you're no longer married that you sure as hell don't want it to pass to your ex-spouse. <laughs> so that's why we're going to kill the survivorship upon the, um, uh, upon the entry of a divorce decree. Now, Wait, um, yes, now sir? both legally and kind of literally, now... The second word you said, legally and what? Legally and literally. If you're in a, uh, would they allow you to be in a tenancy by entirety, which is specifically states as husband and wife, if they like approve like gay marriage and stuff like that? If there's what I'm sorry. If they approve gay marriage, if gay marriage was approved, could it be husband and husband going into a, a, good a, question. a entirety? If, if it's, that's a very good question. I I will bet you that if marriage becomes gay marriage become legal in Florida, mm -hmm. there will be tenancy by the entirety. Okay. Because it's it's not defined as ownership by a man and a woman. Oh, okay. I got you. By a married couple. It's spouse. So I think it's it will spouse. automatically become eligible um, for gay couples okay. if, if marriage becomes legal. That makes um, it so much better. <laughs> <laughs> that was for you. I got you. I know you didn't want to ask. <laughs> Just gonna come up missing, you know that, right? <laughs> hey, do you know he called me the little NSU midget that was running around Are you serious? in distress? I have the right. 
to say what I want to. <laughs> I didn't know you did that to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, I want to mention two more things and then go, go talk through a chart. Um, the next thing the book talks about is tenancy and partnership. Never heard of it? Don't have it in Florida? Forget about it. Uh, it didn't even make any sense to me. But you're not responsible to know that. But you are responsible to know the three, three types of things we talked about. Three types of co-ownership. Joint tenancy, right of survivorship, tenancy in common, tenancy by the entirety. What the distinctions are, we're going to go through the chart in a minute and talk about the distinctions. But now I want to talk about the concept that the book talked about earlier, which is called partition. Now, there's a horrible definition in the book of partition. Something about a co-owner obtains a division of property, terminating and naming the divided portion. It simply means undoing. We were co-owners. How do we get out of this? I don't want to be a co-owner with you anymore. How can we undo that? Well, we can agree to undo it. That's pretty cold. But if we don't agree, and I still want out, I bring a lawsuit against you for partition. So the term partition means dividing up a co-ownership. Theoretically, voluntarily, but rarely voluntarily, usually involuntarily. I'm tired of being your partner. Partner's a bad word. I'm tired of being your co-owner. I want to end this thing. You won't agree with me to end it? Of course, theoretically, sure. I could sell my interest to somebody else, but nobody's going to buy it, we said. So we've got to get out of this some way. So let's have a partition. Partition is... I file a lawsuit with the court for partition, and I say, Your Honor, I'm co-owners with Mark. I'm unhappy. I don't like it. He won't agree with me to get rid of this. Your Honor, will you partition this property for us? Partition it. Split it up. Okay. Well, yes, the court will. You're entitled to that as a matter of law. The first thing the court tries to do is, uh, let's see if we can physically split it up. Now, that didn't work at all with the house. But it's a piece of vacant land. Maybe the court can decree, okay, fine, you take the east half and you take the west half. I'll enter a court order that says that Steve owns the east half and Mark owns the west half, and that's cool. And henceforth, you guys are no longer co-owners, and you each own your own piece of property, like we talked about, your neighbors. But you're not co-owners anymore. That's theoretically possible, but really rare. Yeah. Um, because I'm going to want the piece with a lake on it, and I'm going to want you to have a little corner over there that's not even on the street. And, you know, so the judge has got to, got to do something fair, and that just doesn't happen very often. All right. The second thing, the judge can say, all right, let's sell it. This will work great. Let's sell it and split the money. Well, if we both agree to do that, that's fine. But we'd already not agreed anyway. That's why we're suing each other here. If we wanted to sell it together and split the money, how we could have done that without your help, Your Honor? <laughs> so the court says, I'm going to have a sale, and I'll sell it, and I'll split the money. Now think that through. Think you're going to get fair market value for this sold on the courthouse steps? No. So this is a lousy remedy, but it's great leverage. That'll make you guys work something out. Because if you don't work something out, I'm going to sell the property here on the courthouse steps, and it's going to get 10 cents on the dollar, and then you guys are each getting 5 cents. So what that forces you to do is usually the third thing, and that's a buyout. One of us ought to buy out the other. You buy my interest, or I'll buy your interest. And if we can't do that, we're both going to get screwed in the courthouse sale. So let's work something out here. And that's the third way, is a buyout. Uh, the court can order a buyout, but of course if the guy in orders to buy doesn't have any money, they didn't do any good, you know? But a lot of these cases, nobody has any money either. Well, the buyout's going to be tough. But you could do a mortgage and take mortgages back and stuff like that and all, you know, you could, theoretically you could do it. Um, but um, that's what usually happens is that. Uh, you can't physically divide it, 
and a sale is going to be really bad news. So let's have one buy out the other on some sort of terms that makes some sense. Anything makes more sense than, than a court ordered sale. Or maybe that will induce the parties to both list it with a broker and yeah, let's sell it and let's get fair market value and we'll just put the money. But at least it'll make something happen. As partition, you're entitled to partition. If you're a co, or, uh, a co owner, you are entitled by a law to partition. Um, and uh, the other don't, owner doesn't like it, that's too bad. The judge will do it. And of course, if you want out, why does the other guy want to own it with you anymore anyway? I mean, think about this. If we both agree it's time to end our partnership, then it probably ain't good for either side. Now, I want to look at the chart and the book. It's table 5.1, and my text is on page 86. And it kind of sets forth the differences between these types of tendencies. And it, uh, and I'm going to add a couple more. And I want to talk this through. Um, obviously, excuse me, the headings at the top are joint tenancy. We know that's joint tenancy, the right of survivorship. There's tenancy in common, tenancy by the entirety, and tenancy in partnership or blah, 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 not doing that. Now, it's going to go through the different attributes and it's going to say yes or no, do these apply? Well, is there a right of survivorship? Yes in joint tenancy, no in tenancy in common, yes in tenancy by the entirety. That one's pretty easy. Equal right to, position, to possession, yeah, that's that legal fiction. We both get to occupy the whole thing at the same time. Husband and wife only, well, that one's pretty obvious. That's tenancy by the entirety. Of course, it's no to the first two. Next, is the tenancy severable by one co-owner conveying to a third party? Well, yes and no. Yes, as to joint tenancy, that certainly severs a survivorship, we agree. One joint tenant conveys to somebody else, well, that severed the joint tenancy right of survivorship and created a tenancy in common. It says that a tenancy in common is severable by one co-owner co co conveying his interest to a third party. I kind of disagree with that because you still got a co-tenancy. You still got a, a, a tenancy in common. You just got two different people. But you haven't changed the fact that you had a tenancy in common. You just got different tenants. Tenants by the entirety? No. We talked about that. You may not sever the tenancy by the entirety by a conveyance of any one spouse. Both spouses have to join. If they don't, the deed is worthless. This subject to dower rights, that's irrelevant. We don't have dower in Florida. And I want to talk to you about three or four other things that I think are important that we've talked about. I just kind of added them to the chart here. Feel free to do so if you like. I think they are important. Can you transfer it by a will? Well, in a joint tenancy, of course not. No. You're dead. It passed to the other tenant. End of story. Doesn't matter what your will says. Just irrelevant. Put it in your will if you want to, but it ain't going to pass. It's not going to affect anything. Tenancy in common? Sure, you can will it to somebody else. Tenancy by the entirety? Nope. It has a right of survivorship. Therefore, of course, you can't will it. Um, can one person sell or mortgage his interest? Joint tenancy? Yes. Tenancy in common? Yes. Tenancy by the entirety? No. Either one person cannot. That's what we talked about. Husband and wife got to act together or not at all. Here's a real biggie. Yes, ma'am. Can you repeat the, the column? So can one person sell a mortgage, please? Sure. Yes, yes, and no. Yes, in joint tenancy. Yes, in tenancy in common. But no in tenancy by the entirety because we agreed both parties have to sign any deed or mortgage. Now, here's a biggie. A judgment creditor gets a judgment against one of the co-owners, and only one. I got a million dollar judgment against A only. And A owns this piece of property jointly with B. 
and I attached this piece of property. Joint tenants with the right of survivorship? Yes. I can take your interest in the property. I'll own it with B. It killed the survivorship, though. There's no survivorship between B and me because that terminated the survivorship. But I will then be a tenant in common with B. And B's got a new partner. Of course, if that were the case, the tenancy in common, clearly I can't. A and B own it as tenancy in common. I got a judgment against A. I can take A's interest. Likewise, B's got a new partner. No survivorship. But here's the biggie. Tenancy by the entirety. No. This is huge. This is why doctors, lawyers, people who can get sued individually are not about to hold title to anything individually all by themselves. Hold title with your wife. A judgment against one of the husband and wife, either one, cannot attach to property owned as tenancy by the entirety, period. Whether it's a shopping center, whether it's your home, whether it's your airplane, your boat, your car, whatever. And I was going to bring that up. All of these things we're talking about apply to personal property too. That's not our subject here, but you can own bank accounts this way, stock certificates this way, cars, whatever. Tenancy by the entirety between husband and wife. A judgment against one spouse will not attach to tenancy by the entirety property. Period. Ever. Florida is called a debtor's haven. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is that homestead exemption we talked about. You can have a $25 million homestead. It's exempt from creditors. And you can have another $100 million worth of property owned jointly with your wife. That's exempt from your creditors too. Now that's not exempt from creditors of both the husband and wife. Somebody gets a judgment against husband and wife, hell yes they can take it. Because you both owe the debt. But the debt of either one, tenancy by the property, property cannot be taken. I want to go through for just a minute the buzzwords of how we create these things. How do you get the things we talked about? You create a joint tenancy with right of survivorship by saying, yes sir. I didn't get that um, on the last one. What, what is it in what tenancy in common? Yes or no? Yes, yes. Tenancy in common or joint tenancy, either one. A judgment creditor of either one can't take the interest of both, but can certainly take the interest of the one he's got the judgment against. Yeah, I okay. Say, say, a quick question? Yes, yes. Um, so if you have judgments against you, and it's in both you and your wife's name, and your wife passes, immediately, Yeah. that's available yeah. for her. Yeah, then they attach, because yeah. you're the sole owner. Yeah. What if but not if it's homestead. Right. Okay. But, but the what tenancy by the entirety won't protect yeah. you. What if it was a judgment against her? I'm sorry? What if she died but the judgment was against her? It doesn't apply. Well, then they don't have a judgment against the owner at all. So. Right? I mean, they can file a claim in her estate, but they sure don't have a claim against this piece of property because she doesn't own it. All right. Okay. I want to talk real quickly about how do we create these things. The, the legal language, and we'll do this in deeds and stuff too, we'll go through this, but I want you to know now, because this affects other stuff like we talked about, other, other ownerships of other types of property, including real estate. To create a joint tenancy with right of survivorship, you say exactly that. I deed this property to A and B as joint tenants with the right of survivorship. And if you're good, you say, and not as tenants in common. And if they're husband and wife, you say, and not as tenants by the entire Because you're saying, I really mean it. Because we have a statute that presumed otherwise. So you've got to make it really clear that I mean it. If you want to create a tenancy in common between two people, well, that's pretty easy. Deed it to A and B. End of story. Say nothing. That's what they are. Statute says they're tenants in common unless you said otherwise. If you want to convey property to husband and wife as tenants by the entirety, you say that. A and B, comma, his wife. B and A, comma, her husband. A and B, comma, husband and wife. You spell it out. 
However, if you forget to spell it out, and if they were in fact married, and if they didn't indicate a contrary intent of, no, 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 we want to be tenants in common, then it will be tenancy by the entirety. Okay, and that's, that's the, the end of what I call co-ownership, which is ownership by two or more people. Individual owners, what are their rights in relationship between each other and as to the piece of property that they own in common. Now, time. We're short on time. The second half of this chapter, I gotta say one more thing. I apologize. I gotta talk about community property for a second. We don't have it in Florida, but you probably kind of ought to know what it is. Community property, because we were talking about tenancy by the entirety, property ownership by husband and wife. Uh, as to husband and wife, there are two more concepts. There's community property. We don't have it in Florida. We have it very famously in California and in Texas where they have big money divorces. And this is all the stuff about everything that was acquired during the marriage through the efforts of either party, no matter how its title is owned by both parties. So they're great states for the, let's say, less wealthy spouse in a divorce. In Florida, we just don't have that. Property is owned by whoever owns it, whoever's name it's in. Doesn't mean the spouse can't come in and say, hey, Your Honor, I want some of that. But we don't deem stuff automatically to be a community property in Florida. Okay. And in one refinement, even a step further, in these community property states, is called separate property. And all that is, is if you are in a community property state, property that was owned by one of the spouses before the marriage, not acquired during the marriage like we just talked about, or inherited during the marriage by either one of the parties, that's called separate property. And that makes sense. You didn't earn it together, you weren't even married, or maybe you were married, but it was inherited from your family, not from is, you know, it, 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 they're, they're, they're buzzwords, but they're, they're not real relevant in Florida, but you'll hear about them. But you do hear people talk about community property from time to time, and it's just not, not relevant in Florida. Okay, now, based on what I want to do, we've officially run out of time, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, we have yet to discuss what this chapter calls co-ownership. And that's entities. That's partnership, corporation, limited partnership, limited liability companies, etc. We're going to do that next class. So the second half of chapter five we will discuss next class. I'd like to tell you what else we're going to do next class and give you your reading assignment. And we may not make it through this because we've got to do the second half of chapter five. But this is our target and I'd like you to read it. Chapter six, condominiums. And I'm going to mention what it is in case you got a different version of the book and I'm not sure what condominiums we're going to do. We're going to do chapter seven and eight. They're on leases. And I'm going to send you a lease sometime before the next class for you to print or not print as you see fit, but to bring to class and be ready to discuss, and we're going to go through the lease. Chapter 9, which is easements. I want you to skip chapters 10 and 11 for now. We're going to do them, but we're not going to do them next class. Chapters 10 and 11 are all about, um, I forgot, we're not going to do them next class. We're going, to do them, we're going to do them in the third session. But I want you to read chapter 12 on realtors and chapter 13 on fraud. Now, if I were a betting man, we probably won't get that far. But in order to have any chance of completing the whole book, we've got to try to stay on that schedule. And we've got a half hour's work of, um, we'll do early next time on what the book calls relocate syndicates, which I think is absurd. 
but it's entities. How do you own property? What type of uh, you know partnership corporation is it? Is? <laughs> that's where we are. Now here's the one other thing I want to do now. We're going to have a practice quiz. This is to answer your question about what type of questions you're going to have on test. You're going to see what kind of questions I'm going to give you. Blame on me. Yeah. Test. I've got a quickie quiz here with just two questions. Um, I'm going to your name, obviously, and sign it, and answer the questions, and when you leave, um, hand it in to me, and go home if you would, and hopefully you'll still be out of here by 4.30 if you work real fast. We're going to talk about the answer. I'm going to grade these and give them back to you, but they don't count towards your grade in the quiz. But they're going to give you the flavor, or these are the types of questions you're going to have on test for me, probably. And these are quick easies. I think. I hope you'll agree. And, um, and then we're done, and I thank you. Thank you for your attention. I'll look forward to next time.